is here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Sempervivi, also WrestlingObserver.com. So, yes, last night, it was Roman Reigns versus Daniel Bryan in the main event of the Fast Lane show. And what happened was they wrestled. It was really good. And then, of course, the referee took a bump. And at that point, Edge, the special enforcer, he jumps in the ring. Jay Uso jumps in the ring. We get this schmoz. Edge takes a bump. He gets hit by Daniel Bryan with a chair as Bryan's trying to hit Roman. Roman taps out, but there's no ref. Edge wakes up. He's so mad he hits Bryan with a chair. And then he hits Roman with a chair. Then he throws a tantrum and walks out. And Roman crawls over and pins Daniel Bryan. And yes, the main event is now a three-way. It is Daniel Bryan versus Roman Reigns versus Edge. And before we talk about everything else and such, I would like to say that... Can you imagine living in a world where you had a guy who was very popular, and one day his neck gave out, and in a tearful promo... He announced that he had to vacate the championship and retire forever when he was not ready. And he's out of action for years. And he works hard and he he goes out and he does acting and some other things. But there is a hole in his heart that can only be filled by professional wrestling. And he works hard and he meets with the best doctors and he goes to the best surgeons and finally they are able to put this tin man back together again and he is finally given clearance to come back and finish off the story of his wrestling career and he comes back and he makes a valiant return and unfortunately he does a couple of matches one of which happens to be the greatest wrestling match of all time. And he suffers a serious injury. And he is forced to take time off. And he fights. And he scratches. And he works his way back. And he wins the Royal Rumble. And he explains, my God, all I want in this world is to win back that title I never lost on SmackDown. SmackDown has always been my brand. There's a horrible man and his cousin that have been running roughshod over this brand. And they've been beating everybody up. And damn it, I'm just going to come back and I'm going to win that title at 46 years old with a surgically repaired neck. And WrestleMania, it's all I want. And a month before the show... Well, this guy's just not getting over as a baby face. We're going to turn him heel a month before WrestleMania. And man, we're going to throw that that goat-faced guy back in. Because he always gets over. Even though we've beaten him like a drum for months now. And treated him like a mid-carder who's 39 years old talking about how he's too old for this and he's ready to retire. We'll put that guy back in. I mean, this, everybody, listen... It's for the best that it's a three-way. But this is like the peak of incompetence when you really think about it. They couldn't get Edge over as a babyface. And if you watch the show, it's like abundantly clear why. I mean, for like three weeks now, his character's been so unlikable. I mean, he goes out and he goes and meets with everybody before the Elimination Chamber. And he tells them all, man, if you win, oh, I'll be so happy to face you. At WrestleMania. Because I'm a likable guy. I'm a baby face. I'd face anybody. And then they do the Elimination Chamber. And Daniel Bryan wins. And he's immediately beaten by Roman Reigns. And then everybody's got to cry about it. Daniel Bryan complains about the rules. Even though those were the rules. But now he's complaining about it. Now Edge is mad that God forbid somebody get a championship match at Fast Lane. And then he's going to have to face the winner at WrestleMania. Well, he's all he's all upset about it. And he's pissed off and mad. Even though it doesn't matter what happens, he's still going to get his title match in Mania. So they turned this guy into some unlikable creep. And now here we are, and they're scrambling to try to make this thing work. I guess Vince woke up one day and went, I don't like it. This Edge, not a likable guy. Well, it's your show, bro. You're the one that screwed this up, Vince. 
So that's where we are, and now it's to be a three-way, and we're heading to WrestleMania, and Daniel Bryan's got to save the show again. Literally, it's the exact same thing that happened with Batista. They brought an old guy back. He was supposed to be a babyface. They booked him like a nerd. Everybody starts hating the guy. And so what do they have? Oh, let's throw Daniel Bryan in there. On, by the way, a show that at the last minute Hulk Hogan is going to host. It's totally full circle here. And now we head into WrestleMania. What can you do? What can you do? What can you do, Mike? That's your that's your cue. I'm say, look, it wasn't Batista's fault last time around. You know, it was that whole deal with Roman Reigns and Daniel Bryan and him, you know, taking on the damage in that. So they had to call an audible a lot earlier than they did, you know, this time around to make sure that Daniel Bryan ascended at, at WrestleMania that year. I wonder how this is going to all work out if the rumors are true about Daniel Bryan going in the Hall of Fame. Do we get a loser must retire match where Roman wins and Edge and Daniel Bryan lose? Do we get just what I wanted in the first place, which is Daniel Bryan defeating Roman Reigns at WrestleMania, which would have told a much, much, much better story, in my opinion, to have Daniel Bryan go after one last bit of glory starting at the Royal Rumble where... His legendary, Roman's legendary issues with the fans began in Philadelphia where he won when they all wanted Daniel Bryan to win and he stood there tall. I thought that would have been a better story and you could have had Edge do something else, but obviously they didn't do that story. But now that they are going in this direction, I do wonder what's going to happen. Do you give Daniel Bryan the victory here? Does he lose and Edge lose? And if the rumors are true about the Hall of Fame, they both go into retirement or they both go away for a while? I, I don't know, but it's uh, it's amazing that they are going back to the well with Daniel Bryan, the one guy that the fans really never lost any faith in whatsoever. It's amazing they got to go back to that guy. Dear God, our Twitch. This guy here, how'd they screw it up? You were clamoring for a three-way anyway. Well, first off, I was never clamoring for a three-way. And how did they screw it up? Well, let's see. The plan was for Edge to go into Mania as a babyface against Roman, and they screwed it up so bad that they had to turn Edge heel and put a guy in that they had beaten like a drum and treated like a geek for most of the last year. How did they screw it up? Hello? You were supposed to want to see Edge versus Roman in a singles match in Mania. Did you? Well, if you didn't, they screwed it up. Because that's what they were trying to do, and that was the plan. Why do I need to explain this? What has Daniel Bryan... Listen, I'm a huge fan of Daniel Bryan. Don't get me wrong. What has Daniel Bryan done to deserve to be into the WrestleMania main event? Well, let's see. He lost to Nakamura, never got revenge. He lost to Cesaro, never got revenge. He lost to the Elimination Chamber. The rules were, you're going to go through the Elimination Chamber, and then you're going to face Roman. Well, he went through the chamber, he faced Roman, and he lost. So that's another one. Then he worked his way to another title match at Fastlane, and he lost. What has Daniel Bryan done in storyline to get into the main event at WrestleMania? Nothing, except he's a guy that people actually like, despite what they do with booking. Because they can't book any baby faces. Literally, the only baby faces that get over are the ones who, ha- who manage to somehow be inherently likable. But when you start booking people, they invariably end up unlikable because the company does not know how to book a babyface. The story of Edge in no universe should Edge be an unlikable guy in the story. But they did it. And so they screwed it up bad enough that they had to turn him heel because they knew at Mania, well... This Edge, this Edge babyface thing isn't going to work. Why? Because of how you booked Edge. Not because Edge is inherently unlikable. You made him unlikable. You messed up. Back in a moment with more Observer Live. They started talking about, is it Bet Kings? I don't know. But they started uh, talking about some... Uh, this Draft Kings. Draft that Kings. Is- Compulsive gamblers. They had some things to say here. There were only a few guys in the cage at the time, and they were down. So he escaped his pod early to take a gamble that he might be able to eliminate one of them. Which, by the way, did not pay off. But I was told, wait, Brian, it doesn't matter if the gamble pays off or not. I said, what? You're telling me 
that if you have a net worth of $500,000 and you see that it's the Seattle Seahawks against the Portland Trailblazers or whatever the Super Bowl might be, and you bet on the Seahawks, somehow the Trailblazers win okay. and you lose $500,000. Okay. You're broke, but you're telling me that you can go to your fucking wife and say, yes, dear, that's how professional gambling works. Do you know what your wife will say to you? She'll say, fuck you. We're divorced. <laughs> you compulsive gamblers. If you enjoy these videos for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.